Hello, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the requests cache library for Python. So the, uh, the request library is very popular. It's fantastic for doing HTTP requests very easily and very cleanly. Um, it's, it's wonderful. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about a helpful companion library called request cache. And so request cache helps you cache HTTP requests made with the request library. So I've noticed I may have I've forgotten some S's in those previous slides. I'm sorry about that, but we all know we all know what I mean. Um, so what that's going to mean is that we may make a request to a server and we get the request back, and then we're going to save that. And so this can be really useful for um, coding and testing projects that um, use HTTP APIs, right? So some places might limit you to the number of requests you can do you know, in five minutes, and maybe you want to do more, and maybe those requests are always going to be the same. Um, so this cache, caching can really, really help with that. So um, just install like you would any other wonderful Python library. Um, so now to implement, there's two ways to do it. But um, in this video, we're going to explore just the monkey patch way. Um, and the monkey patch method allows us to um, basically use the request library as is without having to change any code. So if you had like a script you had written that was using the request library with this monkey patching system, you could just add a few lines of code and your entire program now is going to be using the request cache. So nothing, you don't have to go recode everything. It's, it's, that's why I want to show you to you because it's, it's wonderful. Okay, so here is a normal request. Um, import the request library. We go requests.get and then we give it a URL. We're going to my wonderful website. <laughs> so here is um, it with the request cache. So we're going to import requests again, and then we're going to import request cache, and then we're going to initialize the cache. And then we're going to do our get request again. Um, so every time now that we call this again, it's not going to hit the wire. It's not going to go to the servers that jasonregnan.com is sitting on. It's just going to go internally. So, um, and what do I mean by internally? Well, by default, the cache is uh, saved in SQLite database. Um, it can also use a Python dictionary, Redis, and MongoDB, but I think that um, we're just going to use the default because who doesn't love SQLite? It's, it is, it's, it's awesome. So, um, you can rename the database. So that way, you, for whatever reason, you might need a you might need to name it. So we're just going to call it test cache. So that um, initialization is just going to give it a name. And uh, we can also say how long we want things to live, right? So we made that request for my homepage. How long do we want that cached page to live in that SQL light? So here we go. We're saying that it's going to be cached for one second. So that means I make a request to my homepage. And every request I make for the next one second is actually going to be just going to the SQL light database after a second, then it's going to go back to the internet and download a new copy. Uh, you can also disable it. So very simply, just requests underscore cache dot disabled, and it'll be disabled. And now all of your requests are going to be going just as they normally do. So maybe in your program, you want a certain um, phase of it to be all cached, and then you want uncached, and then maybe you want to go back into the cached. Um, and we can also just uh, remove that cache, that little database we made um, with SQLite. We can we can delete that by saying uninstall. Um, and we can test if a cache or a request was from the cache by just uh, our request. So here we go, request.get, we get that URL. Um, there's going to be a new value here called from cache. It's going to be either true or false guess what it means. If it's true, then it's from the cache. If it's false, then no, it's not. Um, so yeah, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And hopefully you can use this library. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And um, if you want more programming, open source software videos, please uh, subscribe. Thank you for watching.